structure in this video. We are going to look at lots of different freestyle and wave maneuvers. There are also a couple of travel features with good action, so lean back and free your mind. Start the jive coming on a broad reach. With a wide grip on the boom, take your back foot out the strap and place it on the rail. To turn, lean forward as you push the rail down. Keep the weight forward, putting pressure into the mass track as you bend the knees to absorb the chop. A little past mid jibe, sheet out to get ready for the sail shift. Don't flip the sail around before you are in a new direction. Change your feet position just before the sail flip, placing the new front foot between the mast track and the foot straps, so that you keep the weight forward to avoid losing speed. Here's another jibe variation. Notice how the feet stays in the straps a little while longer after the sail shift. This is not quite as efficient as the other technique, but it gives the beginner more stability in the jive. On a course high to the wind, take both your feet out the straps and place them forward on the board have into the wind by pushing down the windward rail. Go boom to boom, or as here, grab hold of the mast.
pull the rig over the tail and tie it to the body. Keep carving until you come off the plane, then put your forward foot slightly in front of the mast and make a quick step around it. When you come onto the other side, sheet in hard with your backhand and keep your weight over the tail to prevent the nose from sinking. Find a steep chop or wave for your takeoff. When the nose of the ball reaches the ramp, compress and extend your back leg as if you were jumping on land. In the air, have your legs and rig tucked in. To land tail first, keep the weight over the back of the board after takeoff. Sheet out slightly with your backhand at the peak of the jump. Just before touchdown, you extend your legs, then as your board hits the water, bend your knees to caution your landing. To land nose first, bring your weight forward as you reach the peak of the jump. Extend your front leg to lower the nose and sheet in with your backhand. When the nose hits the water, straighten your back leg. The sail docking is done by your front hand crossing well over the back hand. This should be done about 150 degrees off the wind. In other words, quite early in the turn. It's important leaning your body and rig well into the turn to dock successfully under the sail. If you don't, the rig might be blown away downwind. When getting on to the other side, it is crucial to get hold of the boom as far up towards the mast as possible. To fully regain control of the rig, you must keep carving when you reach the other side. Slow down by shortly heading a bit into the wind, pushing the tail straight down without engaging the rails. Lean into the turn, and as soon as the board comes around, Get the weight forward into the mast foot so the tail doesn't sink. When you have regained total control over the board again, flip the sail around and you're ready to go. Initiate the body drag on a downwind course well powered up. Put the front leg in the water first and hold the rig close to your body. When returning back on board, 
do so by bringing your back leg up first. Glide from your knees and down. Don't get too deep in the water, then you create too much drag. Cup hard into the wind by pushing the windward rail down with your heels. Just before you lose the planing, pivot the board around on the tail, simultaneously pushing the sail down. Take off with the harness hooked in, then let go with the front arm just after getting in the air. Bring the hand back on the boom just before landing. Just after the takeoff, stretch the front leg down under the board. Keep the rig close to the body. Land tail first with the most of the pressure on the back foot, placing the other foot right next to the strap. On a reach, pick a steep wave that will send you straight up.
tuck your forward shoulder in towards the boom and with your back leg kick the tail up. Don't take the board down too soon, then you might miss the landing. Take off on a not too steep wave on a direction slightly downwind. Try to go not just straight up, but to have forward momentum as well. Have your hands far apart in the boom to make the forward weight transfer work better. Throw your body forward with your chin down to the chest and sheet in hard with the backhand. Don't go straight over, go for a more horizontal rotation and keep sheeting in all the way through the front loop. When jumping high, you have to delay the rotation waiting until you have reached the highest point, otherwise you might over rotate. Come on a downwind course and take off on a steep wave as you throw yourself forward over the rig. Contrary to the front loop, you must place your body right over the sail. Pull the board in close to your body and stay sheeted in all the way around until you land. Getting the right ramp is important. Pick a steep wave that will send you straight up. Look over the shoulder to prepare for the landing. Take off with an angle into the wind and keep the weight over the tail. Sheet out and land with the nose pointing well downwind. Carve hard into the wind and just before losing all the speed, backwind the sail by pushing it forward and against the wind. With the feet just behind the mast track in a wide stance, keep the rig forward until the board is on the new direction. Now push the clue through the eye of the wind and simultaneously change feet position. Shoes coming in on a reach, quickly jump around the mast and push against the sail to get back winded. Push the clue through the eye of the wind 
and at the same time change feet position. Hold the rig clue first for a little while as you bring the front foot up just behind the mast track. With the knees pointing out, bring the front hand all the way up close to the mast. Behind your back, grab hold of the other side of the boom and simultaneously change feet position. When you get on a new direction where you would normally flip the sail in a jibe, instead follow the sail around with quick steps. Make sure to step on the middle of the board and push the rig around with full commitment. Coming on a reach, take a step forward of the mast as you determinedly push the rig against the wind. Jump around the mast and sheet out a bit as you return behind the mast track. With a wide grip on the boom, take a step forward pushing the sail clue first against the wind. And at the same time, carp the board around. Sink the nose a little and get the board onto the new course by holding the rig forward. Come in on a downwind direction with the feet in a wide stance out the straps. Make a crossover grip just as in the dog jive. Pull the clue over your head and grab hold on the boom on the other side as close as possible to the boom front. Flip the sail around as in a jive. Come in about 90 degrees to the wind. Change your feet position so the knees turns outwards. Duck under the sail by the mast hand crossing over the boom hand, throwing the sail into the wind. It's important just before letting go of the sail to pull down the boom, so that the sail doesn't just dump in water but flies over the surface, held up by the wind. A key point in the dock tag is to cut the board into the wind simultaneously with ducking under the sail. Pull the rig over the tail and push the board onto the new direction. Mm -hmm. 
On a downwind course, stretch out your front arm and sheet in with the other as you carve and lay the sail over the water. Keep carving as long as possible, at least till halfway. Then in backwinded mode, bring the sail back up, holding it over the tail, pushing with your backhand. When almost 360 degrees round, sheet in to get out the backwinded position. Before takeoff, bring the back foot out the strap and leave the other foot sitting loose in the front strap. As you get in the air, push the board sideways with your back foot. During this, it is important to keep the body over the board. Land with one foot on the nose and the other up in front of the mast track. If you want to make an aerial jibe, you then move the pressure over the tail and sheet in when the speed slows down. With both the feet in the straps, find a little steep chop. As you leave the water, keep the mast hand very close into your body and let go with the boom hand. Throw yourself forward and pull the board up. Cross over to the other side by grabbing hold of either the mast or the boom. Make sure not to turn the board around more than 200 degrees. Sheet the sail in to regain control, shortly standing in a sweet stance before taking the feet out the straps. Initiate the button turn high on the wave using the power of the wave to speed you through the turn. Hold wide on the boom and preferably have both feet in the straps. Lean into the turn putting pressure forward into the mast track. What you aim for is to come back up the wave with as much speed as possible. There are many options for ending the button turn, as here the basic cutback. In a cutback, open up the sail as you come up the wave face. Put your hands together and stretch your arms as you push the tail down to redirect the board. And off the lip is a delayed cutback, where you hit the lip as the wave breaks. You must come up more vertical than what is needed in a cutback. In an aerial off the lip, timing is everything. You also need to come out of your button turn with good speed. The easiest way of performing an aerial is to hit the wave on the shoulder as the white water comes against you. Keep a relatively wide grip on the boom as you come out the button turn. Push the tail into the lip and tuck in when you get in the air.
start as in a normal button turn, then do kind of a duck jive with both your feet in the straps. Use extra energy to hold onto the sail coming out the cut back, as the sail will be quite unstable. Come with full speed into the button turn, carve as far out as you can, and sheet out to open up the sail. Hit a steep part of the wave, throw your weight backwards to get the rotation going, when you pass the eye of the wind, sheet the sail in. Today is going to be a very interesting day in Klipmøller. A very powerful low pressure system is taking its course up through the North Sea. Uh, predictions are late afternoon, beginning of the evening, we could have up to hurricane strength winds. And if that happens, with this temperature, we probably won't be able to sail. But uh, let's pray. <laughs> The hurricane came through with heavy rain and the wind was too unstable to get on the water that day. The following days gave us some very fine sailing from over mast high storm swell to glassy 2 meter waves in side offshore wind conditions with nice sunshine. Standing right next to a sign where it says "Warning: Swimming may be lethal." <laughs> that is uh, this stretch right behind me, totally flat. It doesn't look that dangerous to me, but I wonder what they're gonna write about the ocean side.
Land a wheelie skipper on a downwind course and let the fin catch so the board spins a full 360. Stand a short moment, clue first backwinded. Then pull the sail in and return to our original course. Hold the rig behind your back and lean out to cut the board into the wind. Bring the board as far into the wind as possible, then make a helicopter tack behind your back. For success, practice this move in side offshore wind conditions. Start carving into the wind just before you reach the wave. Hold the rig over the tail till after passing through the eye of the wind. Then push it forward, getting backwinded. On a small wave, spin the fin out and immediately after push the sail into the wind, holding the sail and balance point over the nose of the board. the rig tied into the body as you come out of the auto rotator. To get in sweet stance, make a jibe where you stay in the straps. Take off into the wind, similar to a back loop. To rotate, keep your weight over the tail of the board and hold the sail sheeted in. Initiate the one-handed body drag hooked in, coming on a reach. Be careful not to pull the sail too far down when you jump out. Sheet in with the backhand to keep the weight forward over the mast track. Return back on board by bringing up the back leg first. Duck under the sail, push it down and carve as far around as possible. Past halfway, bring the sail back up and hold it over the tail and push the board onto the new direction.
Hold the weight forward as you come out of a wheelie skipper. Let the board spin a full 260 back to original course. As the fin catches, jump onto the other side to get backwinded. To flip the sail, push with your backhand as in a helicopter tack. Duck under the sail in the bottom turn and come back up the wave with as much speed as possible. Hang on tight when you get in the air as the sail will be quite unstable. Make a quick step in front of the mast on a reach, preferably coming down on a little wave. Keep your feet on the middle of the board and remember to push against the sail with your backhand. Before the wave gets really steep, dock onto the sail to get backwinded. Engage the rail and push with your backhand.
In the next couple of minutes, we're going to be looking at how to tune the equipment. Correctly tuned equipment is going to make the sailing time much more enjoyable. And it can make the difference between making a move or falling in the water. But let's have a look at the mast track. The mast foot position determines how the board is sitting in the water. If you have the mast track forward, you're going to be pushing down the nose, getting a longer water line. Where if it's at the back, it's going to be riding more on the tail and you get a shorter water line. Now we have looked at what makes the different kinds of water lines. And uh, knowing these rules, you can put together your own idea about how to trim your equipment. Just keep in mind that a long water line is good for rough conditions, good for short board beginners, whereas a shorter water line is more radical in the moves, it's better in flat, flat water and lighter winds. On most wave and freestyle boards, the mast track setting would be between 140 and 130 centimeters from the tail. The boom height adjustment has pretty much the same effect on the water line as what the mast track has. If you're riding with a high boom, putting pressure into the tail area, thereby getting a shorter water line. If you have a low boom, you'll be putting pressure into the nose region of the board, getting a longer water line. Let me show you how that works. Riding with a low boom, you're putting pressure into the mast track in getting a longer water line. Where if you have a high boom, notice how the weight is coming on to your back leg and you're pushing the tail down and then you'll be having the, the board riding on the tail with a shorter water line. A high boom is good for light wind sailing because you can hang out in the boom and you get a freer and earlier planing. It's also good for jumps because you can kind of pull yourself up in the boom and you get more air in the, uh, in the jumps. When sailing in overpowered situations or very strong wind, lowering the boom can give you a lot of control. Also uh, in jibing and in button turns, having a low boom is, is a good thing. A sailor won't need to move his boom more than seven or eight centimeters between the maximum setting to the minimum setting. What you gain with having the foot straps forward is that you get the longer water line that's good for rough conditions and good for the heavyweights and good for the shortboard beginners. Having the foot straps in the back position, you get the shorter water line, which is good for lighter guys or sailing in calm flat water or on a big white board. An important setting of the straps is the size. Let me show you uh, how a strap should be. You don't you don't want to have it so only the tip of the toes are, are coming out on the other side of the uh, foot strap. That's going to be bad news in the jumps and in, in, in your maneuvers. You want to have your foot well placed in the strap so it feels like it's, it's sitting firm in there. You don't want to have it too big so you're falling out either. Always make sure that the screws in your foot straps are tightened because if they're not, the strap can move like this. And it will be very irritating when sailing because you don't get a firm feeling in the straps. So make sure that they are always tight and that they're coming out a little bit like this so you get a nice opening on the foot strap. There are three things you can play with in your fin tuning. One is the size of the fin, another is the design of the fin, and the last thing is the position in the fin box. That is if you have a, a US box. The rule for finding the right fin size is very simple. When you're sailing in strong wind, you can use a smaller fin. And in lighter winds, you use a bigger fin. Choosing the right fin design can be said very simple too. If you wanna sail in waves and strong winds, you'll be using a fin that's more back rate like this one. If you're going out in lighter winds, flatter water for freestyle, you use a more upright fin like this one here. The position of the fin works this way. When you have it at the back, it will be better for going upwind and going fast. Where on the other hand, if you move it forward, it's more, most likely going to be better for you turning and it's going to help you prevent getting spin outs. 
to be successful in tuning and trimming your equipment, you should constantly keep an eye on the changes you do. You use a pin and make marks on your mast and boom and different places so that you can see what changes you have done. No matter how many tips we come up with, there's only one guy that can say what is good for you, and that is you. <laughs> but uh, good luck on the trimming and have fun on the water.